So, you remember that trend a couple years ago? When various corners of the entertainment industry were trying to subvert audience expectations, only to hurt their feelings when well-loved characters either ruined whole franchises by acting out of character or defying well-established rules? Or have you found yourself bored with books and especially screenplays? Because so many of them look and sound suspiciously alike with only minor cosmetic differences between them? Well, if the answer is yes, and if by chance you have ever wondered who oh who is responsible, one of the most famous culprits is a man by the name of Joseph Campbell, a 20th century college professor with a keen interest in mythos and religion, who once wrote an influential book called The Hero with a Thousand Faces, popularized a phenomenon called The Hero's Journey, and proposed a concept called the monomyth, wherein all myths, legends, and folktales from all over the world are basically the same story, with some slight variations from culture to culture. This concept caught fire in Campbell's lifetime, and spread so wildly that today, the hero's journey is almost as ubiquitous a phrase in writing circles as the expression, write what you know. At its best, the hero's journey provides a template for new writers who could use guidelines for the customary plot points and story beats until such time as they become second nature. To more experienced writers, the hero's journey, again, at its best, alerts us to patterns in well-established story tropes as used by expert storytellers, as well as deviations from the pattern that perhaps better serve the story. At its worst, or at least what I hope is the hero's journey at its worst, it engenders laziness both in the telling of stories and also the interpretation of those stories. That is perhaps why it is so frustrating to hear Joseph Campbell speak unchallenged, because he seems to be advocating the wholesale trivialization of any folklore archetype that he didn't feel like thinking about too hard. Every mythology, every religion is true in this sense. It is true as metaphorical of the human and cosmic mystery. However, in the Thomas Gospel, Jesus says, He who drinks from my mouth will become as I am, and I shall be he. Wow, that's Buddhism. We are all manifestations of Buddha consciousness, only don't know it. Which is a shame, because some of those archetypes were important and worth staying up nights thinking about. But that's not the way Joseph Campbell chose to see it. Seriously, the monomyth is a marvelous dogma for incurious people who do not react well to challenges in their worldview. If, for example, the mythos of ancient Egypt speaks to your soul, and you personally feel the story of Osiris is more compelling than that of Gilgamesh, Hercules, or Christ, you're wrong. Sit down and shut up, says Joseph Campbell. They're all the same story. Or, if by chance you personally find Mary of Nazareth a more compelling figure than her child, perhaps see the journey of a brave girl who carried an unknown entity's baby to term, raised that baby for three decades, and saw him do amazing things, only to then see him get crucified on a hill outside Jerusalem, and then have to make sense of all that, as incredibly brave and at least as heroic as Odysseus or Beowulf. You're wrong. Sit down and shut up, says Joseph Campbell, because women can't be heroes and should content themselves to be mothers or trophies. Now, because journalistic integrity is not a thing on YouTube, the temptation is to be as reductive and simplistic about Joseph Campbell and his body of work as he was to whole continents of civilization and history. But I don't really want to do that, because I don't doubt that Joseph Campbell was smart, or that he read a ton of stuff in his life as a largely unquestioned college professor and author. But I would idly speculate that among the thousands of things Joseph Campbell may have read, there weren't a hell of a lot of biographies in the mix. See, Joseph Campbell didn't just think all myths were the same, which led to all stories being the same. He thought his hero's journey template was a way of life. You know why I love biographies? I love how unformulaic they are. Because apart from having a general idea of how it's going to begin and end, life does not happen in three-act structures. If I'm honest, that might be why I am hopeless at plotting when it comes to my own books. Because IRL happenings tend to include things the author never trained us for. And the improvisation that comes from doing it the best we can with whatever the author gives us is where the story lives. And a sociologist might disagree with me, but it is my opinion that the ubiquity of thinking that led to the hero's journey being all over the place indirectly led to all those disappointing plot twists a while back. See, the procurers of those franchises deduced correctly that there was a market for stories that defied expectations and surprised the audience. But they had been told all stories are more or less the same for so long, they didn't know how to subvert our expectations in a meaningful way, and their careless attempts at it merely served to upset large portions of the fan base. He didn't see that coming. Anyway, remember when I mentioned that if you're a writer, if you have heard the phrase, the hero's journey, it is highly probable that you have also heard the phrase, write what you know. If your art reflects your life at all, 
Odds are pretty strong that many of the facets of the characters in your head in no way reflect the monomyth, just as many aspects of your life do not reflect the monomyth. But I promise, no matter what experts might tell you about broad market appeal or sellability, between your characters and you, there is a story worth telling in there somewhere. And should you choose to tell it in defiance of how little it resembles the hero's journey, you might show readers something really cool that they didn't know they needed in their lives. As always, thank you for giving these videos a shot, and for the record, as neat as it can be to defy audience expectations, it is at least as neat to live up to those expectations.